morning. Um, it's morning time over here. I just woke up a little while ago, made myself a uh, cup of coffee that I put into a Starbucks cup. I bought this thing yesterday. I drank it all, but I had the cup and I just figured I'd use that. Anyway, today is uh, Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. And I don't actually have one today, so I'm just gonna uh, be productive today and get some work done on the van. And I figured before I do that, I would just share with you guys a little bit of background into uh, why I chose this particular van to put my energy into and why I kind of built it the way I built it. And I'm gonna divide that answer into two parts just to sort of narrow it down for you because that's kind of broad saying it that way. I could build the van where things would be impermanent where I could take things out of the van and move it into another van or build it permanently and I chose to build it permanently so that's what I mean I built my van permanently so why I made that choice versus keeping it modular anyway so the reason I chose this van in particular was because and sorry guys I'm, I'm still waking up here <clears throat> bit, bit groggy this morning so bear with me if I wander around a little bit on this conversation I'll try to keep it on point <clears throat> all right so basically the reason I chose this van or a minivan if you will it it really wasn't my first choice but the main reason was because it had uh, a, this this vehicle's a Dodge Grand Caravan so the Dodge Grand Caravan has something what's called stow and go seating or at least it's an option available in some of their caravans and this one has it and that was an important feature for me to look for so that was the reason why I chose this van but there was another reason why I chose this van too and that was because they're dirt cheap and if you go on to um, use you know use car lots or um, just people trying to privately sell their vehicles these things were they were all like two thousand dollars to three thousand dollars I think I looked mine up on Craigslist and I was like okay that that's that's cheap really cheap and that was appealing to me because for the short term what I wanted to do was uh, was really try to wrestle down my debt and get by in something for a little while until I had enough money to get something that I really liked. Mind you, at the time that I was looking at this vehicle I was really close to buying a high top Dodge Sprinter. It was a 2006, it was in almost excellent condition although it it had a pretty major flaw that I discovered in it on the last day. I looked at it three times and I was going down to buy it on the last day and it was raining that day and I asked to look at it one more time before I bought it and we opened up the doors and the entire floor was soaking wet and there was a, um, a small gap on the back doors at the very top because I guess it was in a delivery service <coughs> before. So I guess maybe someone backed up against something and it kind of bent the doors out a little bit. It did have minor accident history on it, but on the outside, the doors looked fine. I mean, it was just an oversight of mine and I didn't see it until that particular day and there was just a gap at the top. And I figured that's a pretty major problem and it was gonna be pretty expensive to get that professionally repaired. So I uh, walked away from that and I revisited the whole Dodge Grand Caravan thing. I was looking at cargo vans like... <clears throat> Hang on, let me get some water or something. Part of this is the, uh, the heater is pretty... dries the air out in here quite a bit. <clears throat> I'm also still waking up. So... <clears throat> I was looking at some cargo vans like the Ford Econolines and the Chevy Express, those kind of vans. And there was nothing that was appealing to me in the marketplace in the area that I live. They were all way overpriced and they were in really bad shape. And I couldn't find anything that was remotely fairly priced and I, uh, 
I just, I just didn't get one for that reason. I would have had to spend like $15,000 on one to get one that would have been in as good a shape as this Dodge Grand Caravan that I'm in right now. And that was just kind of didn't make any sense to me. So I, I left it and, uh, it might be geographically the area. I think they, the market here really inflates the prices on those things. Anyway, I, I guess I could have traveled around, but then you're factoring a lot, a lot more time to go and look at vehicles. And I just, I wasn't into it anyway. So getting back to the minivan, why I chose this, <clears throat> the main reason why I chose this vehicle was it has something called in the Dodge Grand Caravan or the Dodge Caravans, they have an option called stow and go seating, which means the seating in the back of the vehicles will fold up into their own compartments that drop down into the floor of the vehicle. The reason they get away with this is because these are a front wheel drive vehicle. And so they don't have a, they don't have really anything underneath them except for a gas tank. So <clears throat> you've uh, got these big compartments down below that hold these seats. And I wanted that seat to fold down and be out of the way, but I wanted that seat. I wanted the seat because I knew that I needed a place where I could strap in a child seat for my daughter and safely get her from point A to point B. And that was it. Otherwise, you know, and looking at the bigger sprinter like I was doing, I was considering installing some kind of seating system in there so that I could safely attach a child seat in that vehicle for her. It was going to be a complicated project for sure. So I didn't have to dive into that because I didn't go in that particular direction. Rather, I stayed in this direction with the Dodge Grand Caravan, which already had it. So it kind of made things a little easier for me in that way. But it is a small van. And um, I figure for the time being, it's okay for me to be in something like this and make do. The other reason was it was really cheap. So this van was $2,500 and it was in really good shape. I mean... <clears throat> relatively good shape. The body was in pretty good shape. Uh, the suspension was totally gone. The brakes were gone. The, the, you know, the engine's got a lot of wear and tear on it and stuff like that, but it was in, you know, half decent shape. And I figured this is, this is what I'm going to get. So and that's the reason why I chose this vehicle. I definitely would like a bigger vehicle. Like I, you know, I think it would be a lot more I don't know, it, it, it might be more comfortable if I was in something that was like the Sprinter, like I was look, that 2006 Dodge one that I was looking at. I could stand up in it, I could uh, spread out, I could, when it comes time to foraging and stuff like that, not doing it now because of the snow, <clears throat> and well, there's a lot of stuff that hasn't come up yet, but when it does, there would be a lot of room in that van where I could dry things out and put things away for, for later, for like the fall and winter. So. Anyway, I'm in this one and I figured I'm going to keep a storage locker because I'm in this one. So that's why I have a storage locker. And yeah, that's it. Now, the next thing I want to get into, aside from that, if you got more questions about that, then we can get into it. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a, like a Q&A video after this, if there's a bunch of different questions and go from there so the next uh the next thing i want to talk about is why i built the van the way i did i'm gonna break that down into two two schools of thought there's making your van modular so you build things that are impermanent structures that you put into the van and you can remove out of the van keeping it very much in a factory configuration so if anything does happen in the van while you're on the road and you need to transfer things over to another van, you can. It just unbolt a bunch of things and move it over to another vehicle. It's a very, very smart way of doing things. Or the other way is to do things permanently and then install fixtures and stuff in the van that are that are permanent. And um, so if anything does happen to the van, it's going to be really complicated to move it over to another van and or not even possible at all so those are the two schools of thought and it's pretty obvious probably at this point that you can see that the van build that I'm working on is a permanent build so why did I choose this when the other one seems like a smarter option 
And I, I will say for, for most people that are out there building things impermanently in a modular fashion is a smarter idea because you don't really have control over the environment that you put your van through and if if you are in a motor vehicle collision or you know you might be a safe driver yourself but maybe somebody else isn't paying attention or they do something incorrect and they end up slamming into your vehicle and you got to go and get a new one so that's always a possibility and I think it's smarter to build a van that's modular so that you can deal with stuff like that. Nor if any major things happen to your van, you could just move into another one and do it that way. So you're probably wondering, well, if that's a smart way to do it, why did you make it permanent? I'll answer that with this, and, and this is still the case. The reason I did it the way I did it is because this van cost me $2,500, which in my mind was pretty cheap. And it left me with more options and more money to put into the build of the van to make the inside of it more comfortable. To buy things like a max air fan, a fridge, a heater, that kind of stuff. It wasn't so much a strain to go and get that stuff because I bought a cheap van to put that stuff in. Now, let me explain this. The permanent side of it was it was kind of like a, almost a disposable sort of vehicle mentality I had. I figured like, okay, this van's gonna be with me for a little while. I can basically do whatever I want to it. Everything is fair game. And that's what I thought of it. It was an expensive vehicle, so I figured this is something that I can experiment on, I can try things on, and I'm not gonna worry about it. And so at one point I was thinking to go modular and just you know not due to anything too crazy to it and there would have been a lot of sense in that as well and then uh, I figured no I need to be in this vehicle for at least a couple of years maybe three and in two or three years I want to maximize the amount of space that I have in this vehicle I need to be able to work out of it and I need to be able to uh, you know be somewhat comfortable and have a fairly big living area inside the van so I was like okay I'm going to make things more permanent because I can remove the factory paneling and get a little bit further into the vehicle, like capitalize on the space a little bit more. And it's all an experiment. And if something ever does happen to the van, then my thought was like, okay, I'll just walk away and I'll go get another van and start all over again. You know, and you're probably going, well, you put a lot of time into that vehicle. And you're right, I did. A lot of that was also just learning for me. It was, um, you know, it was a platform to be able to try stuff out and not be too concerned about it. So the time investment in it wasn't so much of a, you know, uh, something that I was, like, I was, I was kind of already letting go of it when I got into it, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I kind of want to back this up a little bit because I feel like I should explain the layout inside the van. And I'll just do that briefly right now. So I'm kind of going off track, like I said, I would a little bit. The layout of the van was inspired by a guy uh, on YouTube. His channel, I think, is called Eric... Eric lives or Eric builds or um, I can't remember he's a bald guy like me I don't know where he's from he's got a bit of an accent but I mean to some of you guys I got a bit of an accent too so it's that's that's kind of a relative term and he had that bed that folds out into a couch and I looked at his build and I thought that is the most sensible van build that I've seen for a minivan. And that's where I drew a lot of my inspiration from and then I just built onto it from there. And I moved my fridge and all that into a different area and I made things more permanent, such like that. Anyway, so I'm gonna get back to the, the main part of the story here about why things are permanent in the van and a lot of it was experimental. I don't think I would do it like this in the next van. The next van, I've already got some ideas for that. 
and how I'm gonna go about the build. And it's gonna be different from this one in quite a few ways. And I do wanna talk about that because I think there's, um, it's worth sharing, but I'm not gonna share it in this video. So this van's an experiment and I was just chucking things into it. And for the most part, everything was pretty cheap. Like when I was looking at just the furnishings, like the cabinetry and stuff, if you take my time out of it, I was thinking like maybe a thousand to two thousand dollars to do all the all the build stuff of the van uh, like the furnishings part of it and it's probably not far off of that like i mean i might be at about maybe three thousand dollars on like everything that's excluding the equipment so that doesn't include the solar panels the fan the heater the fridge the electrical that's not that stuff that stuff's expensive so when I got around to the time where I started to put that stuff in, my thought was, well, I'll put this stuff in here, and if something does happen to the van, then I'm just going to pull all that stuff out of it because it still, you know, holds its value, and I can easily set that aside and install that stuff into a new van. And, you know, there's a few things I might have to go and get a spare part on, like... The Max Air Fan, for example, there's that shroud that's glued to the actual roof itself. I'd have to call them up and see if I could get one of those roof shrouds so that I could, re, you know, take this one off and throw it on the other van. Otherwise, I have to mess around with cutting that other one all off of there, and that'd be a big job. So I'd probably look into getting a spare part in that case. For the heater, there's a, there, you know, I'd probably get new exhaust line and an intake line and that sort of stuff, and possibly anyway and just reuse the the heater itself in the new van so the idea there was like I wasn't so much investing the money into the electrical and all those bits and pieces for this van specifically I was thinking if something happens to this van I can pull all of that stuff out of here and put it into the new van and this one can go to a scrapyard or whatever and that was the thinking now you're kind of looking at the cabinetry and thinking, well, all that stuff looks really fancy and really well done. And, and it is really nicely done. It's, you know, it's clean and all that sort of thing. And so it'd be kind of sad to see all that just go to waste. You know, for example, if the engine in this thing suddenly blew up and I needed to replace that, but then it made more sense just to rip everything out of here and walk away from the van. It it's kind of like, well, it's almost at the point now where it'd be almost worth it to just replace the engine and keep using this because it's a beautiful van build and it works really well. If it was any, in any kind of accident, I'd pull all that stuff out of here and that would be that. So <clears throat> anyway, that's, that's my, that's where I'm coming from with this van. Um, I'm really hoping none of that stuff actually happens and I can stay in this van for a couple years, maybe maybe two, three years and pay off the rest of my debt and save some money so that I can do something else. And like get into a nicer vehicle and start the build all over again. Hopefully at that point, I'm still actually in this one so that I can sleep and stay in this one as I'm building out the other one and maybe spend part of my time sleeping in the other one as it's being built out. But there's parts and steps or stages to the actual van build where you don't really want to be sleeping in it. Like, for example, like right after you glue a bunch of stuff in there or you paint a bunch of things. So I didn't have that option with this one. All I could do was really crack a window and just sort of go, well, this is what I'm, this is what I'm in right now. This is, this is my situation and that's that. So <clears throat> I might have ended up sniffing a bit of glue that was off gassing as I was curing while I was in the van so anyway um, the uh, that's it that's all I want to say about this van really you're gonna have some more questions about the functionality of the van and the layout and how things work and I'll do that in another video there's gonna be a van tour coming up with uh, van city van life he's going to be doing the van tour i'll probably end up doing a van tour as well on my channel because i'm not sure how he's going to do it he definitely has his own style when it comes to you know 
shooting a video or doing a doing a van tour and I might be able to do one where I go into a little bit more depth uh, around some of the stuff so anyway that's it guys I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it off there and um, I'll talk about the 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 different building design or approach for the next van in another video. I know a lot of you are going to be curious about that, but I think there's a smarter way to go around doing all of this. And I'm drawing on some um, some of my background in aviation when it comes to that because I think it's it's important. And I would have gone about it that way or this way that I'm thinking if I was in that Sprinter van that I almost bought or um, in something newer. I would definitely build it like this, the, what I have in mind, but I'll share that in another video. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my coffee, you guys, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go work on this thing. I think I'm gonna try and <clears throat> cover this up today. And uh, there's a spot back here. I might try and do the same thing. And there's a countertop that I gotta build in there. And then uh, that'll probably be the end of the woodwork in this thing unless I remove this passenger seat and put a cabinet up in this area. So that's always a possibility. But uh, I'm leaving leaving this whole side of the project for later, later until the rest of it's done. So anyway, we'll see you later. Bye.